Hey, did we say thank you to mommy? Nice thing you're gonna do today. Table. Sit with what? Sit with new people at lunch. You're gonna sit with new well, people I'm at lunch? I get to sit by Allie, but I get to sit with others. Lucky that is a nice thing to say. Duke, what's one nice thing you're gonna do today? Lewis! Hey, how you doing? It's getting cold. Throwback Thursday. The day we tell stories. Let's get into the real love sack story, the one that started it all. Everybody's gotta go to work sometime. Well, not everybody, but those of us who like the hustle. Alive! Hi. No riots? Nope. No. no riots at Lovesack HQ? The day is young. The day is long? It's young. All right. Well, then there's promise for some entertainment. That is a sign that has some history. I'm going to tell you the real Lovesack story. Bye. Going to speak on a panel in New York City. It's going to be super weird. I'm off to speak on this consumer panel in New York City. So these big banks uh, and analysts that analyze all the public companies and, and tell Wall Street traders what's going on and what to invest in or what to not invest in, they hold these consumer conferences where companies like mine uh, can cut or, you know, executives uh, from various companies, various uh, industries can come and talk about their opinions on all kinds of things from technology, what's happening, trends, uh, the economy, whatever. And then, you know, other bankers and analysts come listen and so they can hear it from the horse's mouth what's really happening. And so it's weird when, you know, you're considered some kind of expert at any level because you always wonder, <laughs> I can't be the person who knows the most about this or even um, a person who knows the most about this because if that's the case, Nobody knows anything. Whenever possible, I try to ride the train versus drive in New York City. I mean, it is uh, by far the more ecologically friendly solution. And it's something I've really admired about the East Coast. It could be more fun than Throwback Thursday on this vlog, where I just get to dig deep into the memory of my now embarrassingly long life as an entrepreneur and tell you some stories. So. This week marks the first installment of what will probably be a very long little mini-series on Throwback Thursday that will be the Love Sack story unabridged. I've never told it. Yeah, you can go on lovesack.com, way down to the bottom, read the About Us page and find a little video, 20 minutes of my, uh, you know, the story of, of, of our evolution as a company. And it's fun and, and people love the Chinese stuff and like all the crazy, you know, tractors and, and all the crazy stuff that happens along the way. But um, for this vlog, because of the unlimited nature of YouTube, and uh, for those of you who can tolerate it, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig deep and get into the nitty gritty details. So here we go. Chapter one: The Love Sack Story Unabridged. I am 18 years old. I am sitting on my parents' couch, watching The Price Is Right, eating a bowl of Captain Crunch. Now this is the Bob Barker Price Is Right, right? If that doesn't date me. And I was a weird kid, you know? I was very impulsive, uh, always trying to like do things, uh, you know, spur of the moment, and it just popped in my head. As I'm sitting there watching The Price is Right, I thought, how funny would it be to make a bean bag like this big? And when I say this big, I mean like from the couch to the TV. You know what I'm saying? Like as big as the whole room. Never seen anything like that. Thought it sounded kind of funny. And being me at that time, I got off the couch, went down to Joanne's Fabrics. Um, I was driving at the time. I had this black 1969 Mustang that I had purchased when I was about 17 years old and restored it with my dad. Um, luckily, <laughs> I was rear-ended by my junior high school Spanish teacher and uh, that paid for a new paint job and, and uh, you know, no one was hurt, but um, you know, I did a ton of the work on this car myself and that's where I learned engines and auto mechanics and I'll save that for another day because there's a whole story behind that. But I had this killer 69 Mustang, drove down to Joanne's Fabrics, uh, right there spur of the moment, I'm wearing like basketball shorts and a t-shirt and probably like flip flops because I'm just, you know, a high school kid basically, just out. Hadn't even, you know, thought about uh, starting college yet, even though I was enrolled at the University of Utah. 
but uh, you know, my mind was was just on wasting time. So, get to Joanne's Fabrics. I'm looking, and I, you know, what am I doing in a fabric store, right? When have I ever been in a fabric store in my life at that point as an 18 year old guy? But uh, I'm poking around, and, and I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for vinyl because that's what you make bean bags out of, right? You make them out of vinyl. And so I uh, found this black vinyl, tan vinyl, they're both on sale. You know, I don't know, it's really cheap, like $2 a yard. Sounds good to me. This is the vinyl with like the, the felt on the back, you know, like the cottony sort of like white felt on the back. And, and uh, you know, found two pieces, remnant pieces on sale, totaled about 14 yards. Uh, went to the counter. I can remember it like it was yesterday, this clear plastic bag with my fabric in it paid for it with the you know cash out of my wallet drove home and rolled this stuff out on my parents carpet right there in the living room it was huge and it was you know it was it, was, it wouldn't even fit but you know I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how to how to do this right am I gonna cut out two circles am I gonna um, you know and, and I found this baseball laying around the, I don't play baseball I don't even like baseball but anyway found this baseball laying around the house um, from the yard and it, and it had these two figure eight patterns right baseball stitch pattern so I thought to myself, that's kind of cool, right? This uh, baseball stitch pattern. So uh, that's what I went with. And the very first love sack laid it out. And, and, and how I cut it was, because um, how do you cut a figure eight that big? Um, I, I got a pen, right? Like a Sharpie. And I tied a piece of twine to the top of the Sharpie. And I used it like a compass, right? I put one finger, in the in the center of the fabric, and I would swing the I would swing the sharpie out, you know, pivoting pivoting around this piece of twine, right? I had a finger on the end of the piece of twine, right, and and I would draw a circle with the sharpie. And I drew the top of the circle, and then I got actually on the carpet and I drew the side circles coming in on the fabric, and I literally drew a giant figure eight on this seven yards of black and tan vinyl. And uh, now I had two giant figure eights, and I had no concept as to you know how big it was gonna be. Like, what is what is the what is the formula for the volume of a sphere? Like four thirds pi r, you know, four four pi r cubed or something. Anyway, the point is is that you increase the surface area of a sphere, and and the volume, you know, increases incrementally. I mean, there is uh, so much volume inside of this thing that I was making. I had no concept for that. Anyway. So I took this fabric into the kitchen area, which happened to have our sewing machine. Obviously, it was time to sew this thing up. But I gotta catch my train! Never grow tired of uh, Grand Central Station. Supposed to be on this uh, consumer uh, insights panel at this big bank here in Manhattan. It's in the Chrysler Building, which is like one of the coolest buildings still in Manhattan. And uh, the entrance is what I think I might love the most. Check this out. Just don't build them like they used to, do they? Look at that sucker. Mm. That Art Deco style. Ah, meeting complete. All right, pick up where we left off. So I'm sewing the first love sack on my mom's like 1970s Singer machine and uh, using the skills that I picked up in my seventh grade home ec class. And it wasn't going so well. Uh, heavy fabric, you know, I mean, like I said, home ec level kind of skills. So, end result, I called my girlfriend's mom, who happened to be a great seamstress, and she took the, you know, original, thing not a love sack yet sewed it up put a zipper in it about you know 18 inches long and uh, a week later I had a giant empty not bean bag to fill actually I started it as a bean bag in fact I drove down to Michael's bought a few bags of you know those bean bag beads the problem with the bean bag beads is that they just blew everywhere and made a huge mess. I couldn't even get them into the zipper, you know what I'm saying? And so, I, you know, and not only that, I had to buy them bag by bag. It would have cost me a fortune. Probably would have cost me $1,000 to fill a thing that big with beanbag beads. So I looked around the house for anything else I could find. You know, uh, my parents were into Melaleuca at the time. You know, Melaleuca, like, 
Amway sort of products through the mail, cleaners, you know, skincare, whatever. Tons of packing peanuts. Dump the packing peanuts in. Uh, probably the weirdest thing that went into that original love sack were those blankets from like the 1970s that are kind of foamy. If you know what I'm talking about, like uh, at like old uh, motels, they have those blankets that are, like you, if you move too fast, they kind of spark. You know, they're like, they're weird. They're fuzzy, they're foamy. Anyway, cut those up into strips. But the best thing were my parents' camping mattresses. So down in the basement closet, we had those yellow foam, you know, mattresses that you go camping on with like a bungee cord wrapped around it. Took those out, chopped them up on a paper cutter. You know, the kind of, you know, like wooden thing with a metal arm that you chop strips of paper on. That's how I chopped the foam. I had to chop them one direction into strips, then another direction into cubes. And like that was gonna do it. And not only that, but it was soft and it was gushy and it was, you know, reliable and I could find enough of it. And so um, found some old couch cushions as well, tore them up. But anyway, three weeks, three weeks of finding foam and fabric and crap to go in this thing. Finally had it done and just started using it. Just, you know, hung out in the living room. My parents, of course, wouldn't stand for it. So finally, uh, you know, would take it camping, uh, throw it in the back of a friend's truck. It would, it would migrate around the neighborhood, be in one of my friend's houses. <laughs> and before long, people wanted one. And that was the beginning of maybe starting a business, but I didn't want to start a business. I didn't even want to. You know, I just I just wanted to have this thing and, and, and be a stupid teenager. So, you know, a year of taking it to the drive-in movies, camping. Uh, we would, you know, take it to watch the fireworks on maybe. We would take it out at night and just go hang out on the roof somewhere, like get it up on top of like, a, you know, one of those park pavilions and like look at the stars. And I don't know, it was really stupid. We just take this thing all over the place. And uh, before long, I turned 19. And at 19 years old, as a Mormon kid in Salt Lake City, Utah, we faced the opportunity, choice, to serve a mission for our church, you know, to be a missionary. And I am still to this day 100% dyed in the wool Mormon. And I was absolutely planning on going on a mission. And uh, it came time to take the not yet love sack, just this big beanbag thing. I don't even know what we called it. I guess we just called it a beanbag. Anyway, and put it away in the garage and pack it up to go serve my two year mission. I'll tell you more about that next. I'll tell you more about that in my next installment of our throwback Thursday session on get off the couch. But herein lies the entire crux of this entire vlog. I would not have health insurance and a salary and be able to feed my family and employ 350 or more people today if it were not for the fact that I didn't just think of making a giant bean bag to fill the floor space between me and the TV as I watched The Price is Right, but I got off the couch, drove down to the fabric store, bought the fabric and just did it. Never did I plan on starting a business. Never did I have a vision of what this might become. In fact, it was years later before that even entered my mind. You never know what something could turn into, especially if you do want it to become something great. And many of you have those ideas. So get off the couch and go make it happen before I get run over in Manhattan. It's been a great session. I love you guys. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much for tolerating me. Please share this with a friend. Please subscribe on YouTube. Help me build this channel. Help us spread the gospel of getting off the couch and making things happen.